Welcome back to the Word on Woodward, everybody. It's time for our Downtown Hockey Town segment presented by Labatt Blue. And we are so excited to welcome Director of Amateur Scouting, Chris Draper. He's joining us right now. Chris, thank you so much for being here, as always. Daniela, thank you for having me. Hello, Art. Hello, Chris. How are you? You're looking good, as always, Drapes. Thank you. Appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> well, Chris, I want to start this off by a little conversation we had earlier. Um, you said that you've been watching some of the replays on Fox Sports Detroit of these Red Wings Classics games, which you were obviously a part of, and you found a way to reconnect with some of your teammates over this. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, you know, it was fun watching 90, uh, 1997, uh, probably a couple of, couple of my favorite Highlights, obviously, the, the shorthanded goal that uh, that Kirk Malpe scored. Um, you know, that was something that was special. And, and one of the one of my moments that I always make sure that I bug Joe Koser about when he scored that backhand shelf. If you just look off to the side of the net, I'm sitting there and I got my stick up and I'm ready for a one timer. And Joe Koser does not see me at all. Uh, and he buries it for, for a goal. So as that game was on, I, I actually videotaped it. And I said, Joey, I know you didn't see me, but I'm sure you heard me. And now here's the video to show you how wide open I really was. Uh, so we had a nice little, uh, nice little chuckle with that. And then, uh, you know, uh, the, the, I was kidding around with Brendan Shanahan. We were down five on three. And Scotty Bowman put Shanny out there to kill a penalty. I don't remember that. And so I had to rewind it and videotape it, and I had to send that to Shani. And uh, so we had a little little fun with that and a lot of laughs, uh, you know, with that. And then, um, you know, the fun part, uh, we were watching 2008, and I, I sent Dan Cleary a text saying, are you watching this? And he wasn't, and he put it on. And then I got Dallas, Dallas Drake and Chris Osgood, and then our trainer, our assistant trainer at the time, Frosty, and we were kind of texting and going back and forth uh, on it and, probably almost for, uh, for two periods. And it was, uh, you know what, it was, it was really fun to just reconnect with those guys and, and walk down memory lane. And um, Ozzy, you know, one of Ozzy's highlights, and he always talks about this, was when Dallas Drake took a penalty and then about 20 seconds later, I took a penalty. We were shorthanded for probably about a minute, 20 seconds, down five on three. Henrik Zetterberg was, was un unbelievable on that PK and Ozzy made uh, made a couple big saves. So we had some laughs about that. And Dally and I were talking about how I don't think we were breathing. We certainly weren't looking and we didn't talk. We didn't say a word. And when you when they focus in on the penalty box, you can see how nervous we are at that moment for sure. So uh, with those games being played, there was uh, there was a lot of fun. It was great reconnecting with, uh, you know, some of my former teammates. We had some uh, some good laughs. We want to talk to you a little bit about your current role with the Red Wings as the Director of Amateur Scouting. So to start this off, why don't you tell us how things are going in your new role and really what does your day-to-day -day look like? Director of Amateur Scouting, uh, this is my first year doing it, um, you know, under uh, under Steve Eiserman. And, you know, when we went, when Ken left, there were some changes with the staff. Um, we brought in Jesse Wallen, uh, one of my chief amateur scouts, who is obviously a Detroit Red Wing draft pick. Uh, he, he was working with the St. Louis Blues. We hired him uh, after they won the Stanley Cup, which was uh, which was great. Jesse, uh, you know, unbelievable hockey guy. He was a great teammate, uh, real good person, and and, and a, a tremendous worker. So, big asset to uh, to our scouting staff. And then Ryan Rozmierski came over from the Nashville Predators. Between Hawk and Anderson, who's the director of European Amateur Scouting, myself. Uh, Jesse Wallen and Ryan Rozmierski were, were now running uh, our amateur staff. So we know how important the draft is. And, uh, you know, right now, you know, just taking advantage of technology, uh, watching a, a lot of video uh, on a lot of prospects. When you go out there and you watch the games, I, I would say now, you know, just kind of self-checking everything that, uh, that I feel that, that I watched straight up until... Uh, the shutdown of, of the amateur hockey season and it, it's been it's kept me busy and we've had some great phone calls I'm you know in constant communication of with with any of our any of our staff uh, whether it's in Europe or over here in, in North America just calling talking to them asking who they're watching what they've seen and and we're really just trying to to keep everything as fresh as possible. Chris when this uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic started to hit I know you travel the globe to look at players were 
were you in North America or did you have to somehow make your way back to uh, uh, to North America from Europe? How, when it all kind of came down, where exactly were you and what did you have to do? Fortunately, I was in North America. I was in the United States. Uh, I had just come back. I, I went actually and watched uh, uh, New England Prep School. Uh, their, their playoffs were underway and I went into Boston there, but I had uh, on the on the Monday before the shutdown happened, I was scheduled to fly back over to Europe. Um, you know, so there there was a trip planned. Myself, Jesse, and and Ryan Rosmierski were all heading over to Europe as the uh, all the European playoffs were about to start, and we were just going to kind of go over. And our plan was to go through Germany and and Sweden. Um, to go watch some players over there. So it was uh, obviously it ended up being being canceled. But uh, thankfully, I was uh, I was in the U.S. And, and when it happened, um, you know, I, I was at home. So, Chris, you're talking about being able to travel to Europe, obviously, to scout some of these guys that you might be interested in. With this shutdown, is scouting kind of at a halt or how are you guys um, doing your business now that you can't really travel? You know, it's kind of been unique for everyone within our organization. You know, usually uh, right now we would be in Plymouth for the U18 World Championships. That unfortunately had to be canceled. Uh, but obviously under the circumstances, we knew that that was going to happen. But, uh, you know, that you, you kind of look at where you would be right now and what you would, would be doing. Um, but, you know, with uh, with everything going on in the world, we know that, you know, sports aren't going to be played. So right now it's uh, it's doing a lot of video. And, and, and what I've done... Uh, I've reached out to to all our scouts and basically from players in their area and I've asked them, you know, games that have really stuck out for you for prospects in your area, you know, send me send me that send me the game information and then certainly, you know, I'll go back and watch it and, and that's really what we're doing and, and like I said it's uh, it's still constant communication of watching video talking to prospects and certainly talking to all our scouts to make sure that uh, you know we continue to keep things fresh and, and really do whatever we can do right now. And the bottom line is just watching a lot of video and, you know, trying to, uh, you know, have some conversations with, with these prospects because usually you rely on that throughout the season and then uh, certainly into the combine. But, but right now we're not sure, you know, kind of what's going to happen here. Um, you know, when things start up. Chris, is this uh, the culmination obviously for these players that are going to be eligible for the draft this year, but these are players that many of them, I would assume, you have been familiar with for a number of years now. It, it just doesn't begin a couple of months ago when you, you've been preparing for this and for these players in their draft year, I would imagine, for at least two or three seasons. You know, absolutely. We've done, you know, we've watched these players, you know, for sure the last couple of years, um, you know, and then uh, watching them in, you know, even you, you start – you know, this year would have started uh, the the Ivan Halenka, which, or excuse me, the Gretzky Halenka, which would have started in uh, in Slovakia in uh, the first week of, of August, and then basically right through September up until things were shut down. Uh, you know, that's kind of where we go. And uh, every time you go into Sweden, obviously Hawk and Anderson, and we have Thomas Carlson there. Yeah. You go in and, and they're going to guide you to to the prospects that they like. And you go into Finland and you're going to be with the, the, our, our Finnish scout. You just kind of keep bouncing around all through Europe where it's going to be. And 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 we're with our Europeans. And then the same thing, same thing through North America. Really, it's just constant communication is, is really what it is. When these area scouts are there, they're watching. Um, they know what the, you know, we'd like to call it, you know, the Red Wing, Red Wing DNA of what we're looking for in a prospect. And then from there, you know, we continue to watch as they as they progress. So it's unique. It's a lot of it's a lot of watching. It's a lot of communication. Um, and then from there, it's uh, you know, it's game reports, it's video, it's talks, and and that's really what we're doing right now. We're continue doing that even though there isn't any hockey. Chris, I want to switch gears just a little bit here and talk about some current Red Wings prospects. You had the chance to be at the World Juniors Tournament where Maurice Sider, Joe Valeno, Jared McIsaac were all playing. Um, when you were watching them, what was kind of your evaluation of their progress? Um, I'll start with uh, I'll start with Mo. Um, you know, I thought he had a fantastic tournament. To me, he was one of the best defensemen in there. And obviously, I'm going to be a little biased. There's uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. He's uh, he's a Red Wing draft pick, but. When other organizations, other scouts come up and compliment how well one of your prospects is playing, 
you know, that, that means a lot. And there was a lot of people that reached out with the play of Moritz Sider, um, you know, an opportunity he probably hadn't played, you know, against his own age group for, uh, you know, for a couple of years, he was in uh, Mannheim playing in the DEL, which is the men's league, which where we drafted him out of, and then into Grand Rapids playing against men. So for him to, to go into that tournament and play against other, you know, basically, you know, other players that are, you know, under 20, uh, I thought he did a great job. He had an opportunity which which was so important and which we talk about with his development, you know, to play on the power play, play play on the penalty kill. He was playing against the other team's top lines, which is which is so important for, for development. And just, you know, the five on five. I mean, I think he was there were some games that it looked like he wasn't coming off the ice. He certainly handled it well. He embraced the role. And uh, you know, they played some, you know, they played they played Canada, they played Russia, they played they played real teams, real prospects. And uh, Mo did a fantastic job. So I thought it was a great tournament uh, for Mo. Um, Joe Valeno and Jared McIsaac obviously playing on uh, uh, on Team Canada. Uh, I have to throw it in that they were, uh, you know, the gold medal winners Team Canada was. Uh, and I thought Joe played a real crucial, uh, crucial role on, on that team. He was playing in all situations. He was playing power play. He was taking some big face-offs. Uh, team Canada's coach, Dale Hunter, really – you know, raved about how he could trust Joe in all situations and especially loved, you know, what he was doing in a face-off circle and winning, winning big face-offs. Those are things that are going to be so important. Uh, you know, Mo getting an opportunity to play in all situations, Joe Valeno being able to do that. Uh, and he was on the power play. He was used in, in, in different positions there. At, sometimes he was, he was used as the bumper and, and, and we thought he did a real good job. And sometimes he was on his offside flank and he showed some real deception and, and made some real high end plays, which we love to see. I thought his skating was an asset and, and certainly his compete. Uh, he ended up getting suspended for a game uh, over there, but uh, I thought he did a great job as well. Jared McIsaac. Um, I thought it was huge that, that he made the team under the circumstances of not playing a lot of hockey early on in the season. Obviously he, uh, he didn't have a training camp. He had a shoulder. He had his, uh, he had surgery on his shoulder. He had to repair that. And he basically came back and I think he got eight or nine games before the world junior camp and then went right into that camp. And, and, and obviously the body of work had a, had a big role of why Jared, Jared McIsaac went, but for not playing a lot of hockey and going into the, the, the best tournament that under 20 hockey players can play in, you know, we all felt as an organization that, uh, that Mac did a real good job. Uh, he was on the PK. He was playing in, uh, you know, some big minutes down the stretch and it's important minutes against the other team's top line, uh, real competitive uh, hockey player. And, you know, so all three of those guys, they went in, they represented their countries and we thought they did a great job. And it's, it's always fun to watch your prospects play at the world juniors and, and you want to see how they do against the best of the best and against the other, you know, other organizations, top prospects. And we were excited with, uh, with the play of all three of them. Well, Chris, thank you so much for joining us today. And I hope that next time we're talking to you, it's in person and we've got some hockey going on again. That, uh, that sounds really good. Yeah. And, you know, just, you know, <clears throat> once again, just ending, uh, you know, ending the call, like, you, I can't thank the first responders enough for everything that's going on right now. You know, we get to sit here and talk about hockey and, and we know, you know, what, what a tough place Michigan is right now with the coronavirus. And I just, you know, I can't thank, you know, the first responders and all the workers, what they're doing uh, throughout this state. And, um, you know, so I just say thank you very much and everyone, you know, stay safe, stay home, stay healthy and, and, and let's just do our part. Very well said, Chris, I couldn't agree more. And, uh, as I said, it's always great catching up with you. I am pretty sure, though, that before this is over, I am going to keep bugging you. So be prepared. Okay. All right. Well, I'll be, I'll be ready for you. I usually am at this time of year. Thanks again, Chris. Uh, we'll, we'll talk to you soon, okay. guys. Word on Woodward. We'll be right back.